Hello there folks, I hope you are all doing well. In order to make AI characters follow scripted events, Halo CE makes use of a tool called Command Lists. Command Lists are pretty much as the name suggests, a list of commands that can be interpreted by an AI to perform a sequence of actions. These commands can be used to make AI carry out simple tasks such as move to a certain position on the level, enter nearby vehicles, or even die on the spot. But with some effort and a little bit of know-how, command lists can allow AI to perform actions that they are not usually able to do themselves. For now, let's start off with the basics, as the more advanced stuff requires the use of scripts. The first thing we are going to do is create a very simple command list that will make an AI move from one position to another. Boot up your level in Sapien, go to the AI folder and open up the command list folder. Once in here, click on the new instance button to create a new command list. Clicking on your new command list, give it a name. Remember, it is best to name it something sensible. In this case, we'll call it CL Move 2 Point. There are two folders within the command list, commands and points. Click on the commands folder and look to the properties window. Here you will see a list of all the possible commands that an AI can follow. Along with this list is a description of what the currently selected command does, and a number of modifiers that can alter the command. Create a new instance of a command. You will see it appear at the top of a list in the hierarchy window. Click on this new command. Select the go to command from the list. As said in the description, this command will make an AI move to a point that has been specified on the level. The AI can be told to stop on this point, or move through it on their way to another position. Set the modifier to stop at point. In order for this command to work, we need to create a point for the AI to go to. Click on the points folder, and right click somewhere on the ground in the game window where you would like to place a point. Once you have placed a point, return to the commands folder and select the command you made. You can now set the destination to the point you just placed. We have created our first command list. Now it is time to issue the command to an AI. There are two ways to do this. I will show you the simple method first. Find the Cov Ambush Squad that we made in the last tutorial, and pick one of the starting locations from Squad 1. In the Properties window, you will see at the bottom of the Spawns Properties a list of all of the commands stored in the scenario. Select our CL Move to Point command and set the starting location as required. Then save the scenario and open the level in Tag Test. When the level starts, you will see that the AI spawned on that position is now running from the battle and towards the destination point that you made. If this happens, it means that the command has been followed and the AI is able to navigate its way to the point. With this method, an AI will follow a command list the moment it is created. This is great for encounters where you don't see the enemy spawn in, and as a bonus, you don't need to do any scripting in order for the AI to follow commands. Unfortunately, this does not allow for an existing AI to follow the commands on a trigger, such as a player entering a certain area or when a different requirement is met. I will now show you the second method, where we use scripts to issue a command. Find and open the mission script file that we made in the previous tutorial. Remember, it can be found in the following folder. Data, Levels, Tutorials, My Test Map, Scripts. We are going to create a script that will make the marines follow the CL move to point command list, but only once all of the Covenant attackers are dead. In the script file, enter the following. This script will initiate when the mission loads for the first time, but it won't carry out any instructions beyond sleep until. Sleep until is used to pause the execution of a script until a required condition has been met. In this case, the script will be paused until all of the Covenant baddies in the Cov ambush encounter are dead. Once the Covies are dead, the script tells the AI within the friendly guards encounter to carry out the command list CL move to point. When we recompile the script and reload the level in tag test, we should see this happen. Once the Covenant are defeated, the Marines will move to the designated position. If you have managed to get these same results, then you have learned the basics of command lists. Congratulations! <coughs> Let's try another command list for a bit of practice. Create a new command list called Enter Hog, and then place a Warthog somewhere on the level. Remember, we need to add a Warthog to Sapien's vehicle palette first. Go to Edit Types, Vehicles, and find the Warthog.Vehicle tag in the files. Then. Go to Units, Vehicles, and right click in the game window to place the hog. Open up the Enter Hog command list and create a Go To command to move the Marines near the Warthog. After this, add the Enter Vehicle command. This command will tell an AI to enter the nearest vehicle within a certain radius, or any vehicle of no radius has been defined. You can also tell the AI to enter a particular seat. In this case, we'll tell them to enter any non driver seat. 
After this, create a new point somewhere on the level, followed by a new look command. This will tell the AI to look at the given point. When making a command list, you should bear in mind that there is no way to insert a command into a list, only to add or remove them. If you are making a list with multiple commands, and then decide that you want to add a command earlier on in the list, you will need to delete the list up to that point and remake it with the changes you wish to make. We'll then return to our mission script file, and change the marine's go to point script, change its name to marine's enter hog, and change the command list from go to test to enter hog. Recompile the script in Sapien and go back to tag test. Reload the map, and you should now see that when all of the Covenant attackers are dead, a pair of marines will move to enter the Warthog's turret and its passenger seat, and their squad will look at the point that you made. As well as providing instructions, a command list can tell AI to follow certain behaviours while they are following the commands. When you select a command list, you will see six flags in the properties window. The flags do as follows. Allow initiative tells an AI that it can disregard the issued commands under certain conditions, usually if it is currently in combat and under fire, or if it can see an enemy. The AI will either continue to, or start to act by itself, just as it normally would. Allow targeting allows an AI to shoot at enemies while it's carrying out its commands to the best of its ability. If this flag is not active, an AI will not shoot at enemies while it is following the command list, even if it is currently being shot at. Disable looking prevents an AI from looking around by itself, but it will still be able to follow any look commands that you issue to it. Disable communication prevents an AI from talking to its fellow teammates or making sounds when it notices a player, but it will still make pain sounds when it takes damage. Disable falling damage stops an AI from taking falling damage. Manual BSP index tells the AI that these commands will only apply if the AI are spawned in a particular level of BSP. Seeing that we are currently using a multiplayer level, we only use the one BSP and don't need to worry about this for the time being. These behaviours will stop once the AI has completed the command list, and they will go back to behaving as they normally would. This is where we will finish today's tutorial. I will now tell you how I would complete last week's challenges. For the first challenge, where we had to make the marines retreat when they were reduced in number, I created a platoon for the marines and added the marine squad to the platoon. When the platoon was reduced to less than 50% strength, it was told to switch from an attacking to a defensive state. I also gave the squad some firing positions to retreat to. For the second challenge, I created an additional squad and placed a lone marine sniper within it. Along with the new sniper squad, I created a set of new firing positions that only this squad would be assigned to guard. However, this is where we stray from the tutorial and into new territory. Eagle-eyed viewers may have seen a folder called Move Positions. Clicking this folder allows us to create markers on the map. A squad or individual character can be told to move between these positions in different orders, such as in a loop or at random. Instead of guarding at a firing position, the sniper can move between these positions instead. When the sniper engages in combat, he will then start to use the firing positions assigned to him. If you manage to figure this out, then props to you for putting in the time and effort to learn something new without a tutorial to help you. If you had a different approach, feel free to share your method in the Combat Eclipse Discord server. In the next tutorial, we will go over the basics of scripting, which plays a huge role in campaign mission creation. I will include a few examples of what scripting can do, starting with simple matters such as spawning a group of enemies, to something more complex such as spawning objects depending on the game's difficulty setting. I will also share a few examples of things that scripting can do, but aren't often used in the campaigns. A big thanks to our patrons, ST Fan, Catch Exception, and Valiables, and as always, a big thank you to you for watching this tutorial. Drop a like and subscribe if you've ever been pooped on by a bird, consider supporting the Combat Eclipse project on Patreon, and have a nice day.